Hi, I'm Kristen Oviedo, and this is how you know when to use sine or cosine in physics. So most of you probably learned Pythagorean's theorem in middle school, and that theorem basically allows you to figure out the third side of a right triangle when you have the first two sides. And that's really useful, but we don't always have all of the sides, or at least two of the sides, to figure out um, you know, all the proportions of a triangle, and so this is where you use trigonometry and angles instead. So again, with Pythagorean's theorem, uh, you would have probably these two sides given to you and then you would try to figure out the hypotenuse, but this time, let's assume that you're gonna be given an angle. We'll call that the Greek letter theta. Mark that as a 90 degree angle. And then your hypotenuse, we're gonna call H. So basically, trigonometry allows you to use these two pieces of information instead of the two sides to find the two sides. So this side over here is gonna be the sine of that Greek letter theta, and this side over here is gonna be the cosine of that Greek letter theta. Now, these will be true if the hypotenuse is one, but the hypotenuse could be any number. So just to get your scaling right, you're actually gonna multiply both of these by h. So what if you don't have a right triangle? Well, that's no problem because you can turn any triangle into two right triangles by just dropping a vertical line down and turning it into two right triangles. So the reason why you use sine and cosine or trigonometry a lot in physics is because a lot of quantities in physics are uh, represented by vectors, which are basically just arrows in space. And most of the time, those arrows are going to be in a random diagonal direction. But if you're working with an XY coordinate system, um, you kind of need to know, uh, you know the coordinates of that vector and how far each one extends you know, left, right, and up, down. So we're going to look at a couple of examples here um, of when to use sine and cosine with relation to where the angle is actually measured from. So the first triangle we're going to look at is actually going to look exactly like this one. It's our most general case. Here's our theta and our h. And just for fun, we'll pretend it's a vector. And then once again, we've got h cosine theta and h sine theta. And you can write them in whatever order you like. So let's look at a mirror image of that. Once again, theta, once again, h, once again, h cosine, once again, h sine. So you might be tempted to generalize this into sine is your vertical or um, up and down direction, and cosine is the other one, the horizontal or back and forth direction. Um, but this is why you can't do that. Let's pretend that your theta instead is measured right there. This is still going to be your h, but now up here is going to be your sine theta. And over here is going to be your cosine theta. So instead of trying to say that cosine is your horizontal and sine is your vertical, instead say that sine is whatever side is opposite of theta and cosine is whatever side is adjacent to theta. So you may have learned this in a, a trigonometry class as SOHCAHTOA, but if you're just worried about sine and cosine, just go with this, opposite and adjacent. I'm Kristen Oviedo, and that is how you know when to use sine or cosine in physics.